I was seventh out of nine, and for some reason, the McAndrews boys all had huge heads. <laughs> uh, and my father, to make us feel good, would always say, and we also have, I have size 14 feet and eight and a quarter head. Listen, and so does my brothers. And my dad would say, don't worry, a cathedral has a bigger roof than an outhouse. <laughs> and it also has a bigger foundation than an outhouse. That was my father, chiropractor. I don't want to take away from uh, Dr. Uh, Scott Baldwin's talk today, but I want to give you a little background. Uh, I probably had my first adjustment when I was 30 minutes old. Uh, and uh, I uh, followed my father around, we had a big family, and I'm going to give you examples of what I learned. I was 10 years old, and I'm downstairs in his office, and our scoutmaster, a 90-year-old gentleman, uh, came in, and uh, my dad went to the phone, and I was there, and uh, he calls Dr. Monahan, the Quentin, Iowa medical physician and tells him that he has detected what he believes is colorectal cancer. And he wants to send uh, the scoutmaster over. And then he said, uh-huh, okay, I'll tell him. And then he hung up and he leaned against the wall. He was clearly uh, disappointed. And I said, Dad, what happened? He said, he told me to tell Scoutmaster, I won't use his name, not to mention to any of his nurses that he'd been to see a chiropractor. Okay. Uh, that came up over and over and over again until we got the sore throat documents, most of the AMA documents, indicating just corruption to the core. And I'll just give you a few examples, but literally there are hundreds, if not thousands, of them. Many of you knew Ann Landers, one of the most prominent. They said she had 70 million readers. The AMA was writing her columns for her. And then she denied any affiliation with the AMA. Those of you old enough to remember, she said going to a chiropractor, you'd be better off using goofus feathers. In a national college, I took her deposition, and it was shocking because she had been aided by a chiropractor, but she was working with the AMA, right? And then I, I can't go into all of them because it would take weeks to cover them. <laughs> Dr. Bryden from Sedalia, Missouri, he was... Uh, he, he knew the, a cardiologist, and he would get patients who would, he'd identify the retrosternal pain, and he'd send them over to the hospital where the cardiologist would meet him. The cardiologist was threatened with loss of his hospital privileges. This brave cardiologist then continued the relationship and he testified that, in his opinion, Dr. Bryden had probably saved six lives. Okay. The AMA did not care. When the Wilk decision came down, the Wilk decision banned, excuse me, private, that means the AMA, privately interfering with any medical physician's independent judgment to deal with a chiropractor. My daughter, who practices in uh, Lake Forest, Illinois, has medical physician patients and good working relationships with MDs now. But the AMA uh, took a different tack. There is a so-called state action immunity from the antitrust laws and possibly the racketeering laws that I've used against some medical physicians. They said, let the state boards do it. State boards are made up of what we call participants. The state boards are made up of 12 to 18 medical physicians, same way with chiropractors and that. And uh, three years ago, down in North Carolina, uh, Dr. Cam's <coughs> home state, I think, 
the dentists uh, went after uh, big box stores that had kiosks in their parking lots for teeth whitening. And they were historians with a death wish because it turned out they had documents that said, for crying out loud, we can't compete. Uh, they're charging, you know, 25 to 40 percent of what we charge. So obviously, uh, price fixing scheme. And I believe, I could be wrong on the numbers, but they sent out 40 allegations of criminal activity to the big box stores. Well, it was so outrageous that the Federal Trade Commission moved in and decided that uh, they were going to make an exception to the state action exemption that the AMA has been pushing all along. And it wound its way through the courts, and I've been following it probably on a monthly basis, and then it went to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. And in October, they argued it before the Supreme Court of the United States, and the AMA joined in on behalf of the dentists, saying that you can't touch the state groups. They have the state uh, agency immunity from the antitrust laws. And uh, so we waited. And this week, the Supreme Court acted. And I would say it uh, moved the block forward. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. The Supreme Court ruled six to three, and the six is the law of the land. In the United States, if you didn't know, uh, those nine people on the Supreme Court have as much power as the 535 congressmen and senators, and as much power as the President of the United States. They're co-equal branches. And they ruled that you could no longer have participant control of state boards. Okay, the decision, I passed it out to others, it's a sure cure for insomnia, but I <laughs> The reasoning is, is that if you give, if the state just wipes its hand and says, uh, we don't know, uh, we're, we're gonna give the, the medical physicians control over their activities. What happens is what's been happening to me, I get calls all the time from chiropractors, but I also get them from medical physicians. And within the last uh, six months, I was uh, contacted by a, uh, a, a female medical physician from uh, Louisiana. She was educated in Russia, did her internship in the United States, and she called and said, she was crying, she said she had gone into partnership, which is legal, with a chiropractor, and uh, so had some other medical <coughs> physicians. And they immediately got notices from the state board that their practice was going to be investigated. She says, that's a threat to my livelihood. Uh, what am I going to do? And I said, well, right now you are going to wait for the Supreme Court to rule on that dental board case that's before them because the state boards just laughed at the accusations because they were immune from the type of action we had in the Wilk case that went after <laughs> private action, not state activity. All right, I mention that only because uh, we're embarking on a new phase now. The medical physicians cannot be happy. The chiropractors better watch out too. I, I suspect your state boards are made up of participants. By that I mean people that benefit from the rulings they make economically. All right? So we're embarking on a, a new course, uh, very, very much uh, of concern to the AMA, who joined the dentists in the argument before the Supreme Court. And, uh, Jack Berry, their lawyer, uh, in effect told all the members of the AMA, don't worry, the Supreme Court is never going to touch this state action doctrine. Well, they have. And it is a, a new sunset, excuse me, sunrise for the chiropractic profession. Because uh, I have sent a letter to the Louisiana Medical Board telling them we're waiting with action to 
Supreme Court decision, and uh, it's it's sometimes you 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 all understand this. She cries when she calls me. She said, "I can't afford to have them looking down my shoulder like this. If they take away my license, they tell me that if I just agree." Uh, not to do what I've been doing, whatever that is. I've got experts that say that everything I did was all right, but they have experts that are going to say that I crossed the line in dealing with the chiropractor. Okay? That can't go on. I feel very, very sorry for her, but now Louisiana lawyers are going to have something they can look to. The Supreme Court has ruled. So I am happy to be here. I'm happy that I've got something to report on that I think is at least as important as the Wilk decision. And uh, the, the, the professions, including the lawyers, will be scurrying around for the next year or so, uh, trying to figure out how you take the participants out of the control of these state boards, because they say the government has to be directly involved. They cannot just delegate it to participants. All right, now I'll give you one that uh, foreshadowed or foretold what was going to happen here. My own profession, the famous Goldfarb decision back in 1973 that we relied on in our book case. The uh, state of Virginia declared that it was unethical to charge less than $40 an hour to a client because it demeaned the the stature of the legal profession. Imagine. That had a lot to do with it. <laughs> All I'm telling you is, is in your heart you know why the Supreme Court said participants are terrible in setting monopolistic rules. And in that case, they ruled that you're not going to get away with setting minimum charges. Uh, then quickly out in Arizona, Maricopa County, they set maximum lawyer fees. Guess what? Pretty soon every uh, lawyer or out, uh, out in Arizona was charging the maximum fee because they published it. So we're going to see a whole new uh, set of actions uh, that are going to uh, further uh, ruffle the uh, ability to sleep of the AMA. <laughs> And I just wanted to report on that, um, and I'm going to surrender this, uh, this rustum to Dr. Holliman. By the way, he was an incredible asset in the Wilk case. I just found out yesterday he was actually told, you will not testify in the Wilk case or else. Uh, he had testified the first round. And the AMA was very concerned about it. But that's the power that this AMA had over distinguished <coughs> experts like Dr. Haldeman. They threatened everybody, threatened them with loss of their hospital privileges, threatened hospitals with decertification if they allowed x-rays to be handed out to chiropractors, went to the government, cheated, on the government study of chiropractors mandated by uh, Congress. And uh, when they were asked by Congress if the AMA had anything to do with it, they lied to Congress. Fortunately, the people that gave us all the hidden documents uh, didn't realize that they were historians with a death wish. We got all this information out of this, they called it sore throat. Uh, who gave us the documents. Uh, I go to New Mexico and I say, why do I have more of your documents than you do? And uh, fortunately the guy wasn't an MD, he was a lay person who was their executive director. He says, because the AMA told all of the state boards uh, and uh, societies to get rid of any document that mentioned the word chiropractor. Oh. Uh, after I went to the uh, magistrate that was controlling their discovery in that case, and did that change the outcome? <laughs> he says, you've got to be kidding. 
Uh, after that, uh, they had literally no answer to the documents that I had from sore throat. So all along the way, we have benefited. We benefited from good chiropractors that testified for us. We benefited from people like Dr. Scott Alderman. Uh, and uh, it's been a privilege for me to do it. And it is true, uh, I had a personal pride. In fact, they, they actually objected to the judge that uh, I wasn't behaving like a lawyer because a lawyer is supposed to keep his distance from the client. And they complained that I was acting like the client. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, the judge sided with me. Okay, well, thank you very much for this opportunity to address you, and now I await uh, the privilege of Dr. Baldwin on the initial McAndrews lecture. Thank you.